Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Shar Weekly. In this video, you're going to learn that how you can perform a Touch ID authentication using SIF UI application. You can see that I've already created the basic interface. It consists of a form which, can, which has a text field for a username and a text field for a password, a normal button for username and password, and a Touch ID button or a button with an image of Touch ID, which is shown right there. So what we want to do is we want to allow the user to click or tap on the Touch ID button. User Touch ID, once it is authenticated, we will take the user to a separate page. The first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that we are performing the authentication. I've already created a file called authentication service. You can see that the authentication service is completely blank. We have already imported local authentication. This framework is going to allow us to perform touch ID or face ID recognition. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and create authenticate using touch ID. So I'm going to create that function. And now I can go ahead and say completion handler for escaping. Now, the reason that we are doing a completion handler or passing in a closure is because this process is async. So that's why instead of blocking the thread, we are just going to let it go. And then we're going to wait for it to complete. We're going to go ahead and create a context for local authentication context. And also an error. You can see that these APIs are still Objective C like and not Swift. The first thing we're going to do is check that can we even evaluate your device, meaning if you are using a device that supports the Touch ID. So we're going to use device authentication with biometrics. And if there's any error, we're going to use a pointer and get the error. Next up, we need to pass in, or we need to actually perform the actual evaluation using the evaluate policy. The evaluation is again, device owner authentication with biometrics, and we need to provide some sort of a reason. So let's go ahead and add a reason. I will simply say touch ID, authentication is required. And we can simply pass in the reason, which is simply a string. We will get the success or we will get the error. Now we can go ahead and perform a dispatch on the main queue and fire the completion handler, passing in the success, which is either going to be true or false, and the error. Hopefully, we don't get any error. One other thing to realize over here is that you have to make sure that you are running this, at least for the Touch ID, you have to make sure you're running it on a physical device. If you are running it for Face ID, which my uh, particular physical iPhone doesn't really have, but if you are running it for the Face ID, then you can use the simulator. Now let's go back to the login view model. You can see the login view model doesn't really have anything going on. So the first thing we are going to do is create a function for just a normal login. We won't really implement this function, but if you are logging in using the username and password, you can call this function. Now we can go ahead and create another function, which can be login using Touch ID or something. And in this, we are going to call the authentication service, authentication service dot authenticate using touch ID. We're going to get success and an error back. If we get a success back, then the person hopefully is authenticated. Else, if the, we have the error and we can unwrap the error, then we can go ahead and, well, print out the error. So if the person is successful, what we want to do 
is we want to set some sort of a published property to be true, which is is authenticated. So now I can say is authenticated equals to true. Perfect. Now the only thing left to do is to actually go to the login screen and start using our login view model. So let's go ahead and jump onto the login screen. And we will see that how we can use this particular model. So the first thing we're going to do is create an instance of the login view model. Great. And now we have the touch ID over here. So this is where we can call login view model dot login using touch ID. Great. Now, if this is successful, we want to go to a different page, right? So how do we do that? We have already created a page which is called account balance. It's all hard coded page. So there's nothing really interesting about it. It just says account balance $10,000. And that's pretty much it. But apart from that, there's nothing much going on on this page. So how can we make sure that we are putting this? Let's actually go ahead and remove the white color. There we go. Let's go back to the login screen. OK, so inside the form, I'm going to go ahead and create a navigation link because navigation link can be used to go to different places. We have many different options. I'm going to use this one. The destination is active. Let me go ahead and write it again, I guess. Navigation link. Destination is active. So destination will be account balance screen. Is active. Uh, it will be dependent on the login status. So login view model dot is authenticated and whatever the label that you want to display to click on the link. Well, we don't really want to display anything, so I'm just going to put the empty view. Now, even though we're putting an empty view, let's go ahead and see what's going on over here. Sometimes it doesn't work good. All right, so make sure that you rebuild your application and now it's working. Now, the first thing you will note over here is that when you add a navigation link, it actually added another row for you, even though we have provided that it's an empty view. So we don't really want to see that particular row. Uh, we can go ahead and set the opacity to be zero. So that is kind of hidden. It's still there. It's just opacity is zero. OK, so now I think it's time to run our application and see if it actually allows us to use the Touch ID to go to a separate screen. All right, so this is my actual iPhone. You can see running over here. I'm going to go ahead and run the application. There we go. It's going to take some time to install the app. And then we'll be able to see that if we can go from one screen to the other screen. OK, so looks good. This is our login screen. And I want to use Touch ID, so I'm just going to tap on the Touch ID button. And it pops out and it says Touch ID for Learn Touch ID is required. You can see the reason Touch ID required right over here. And I'm going to just uh, do a wrong ID. So I'm going to put a different finger and you can see that it didn't work. Now let's go ahead and try it again. This time I'm going to try to use the correct Touch ID. And there we go. Perfect, right? The other thing you will notice is that when we went to the final page, which is our account balance screen, it does not really have a back button. So in the account balance screen, we have actually hidden the back button by using the navigation bar back button hidden to true. That back button will be available if you go from account balance screen to some other screen, but it's just hidden on the account balance screen, so which is correct. So there you have it. With only a few lines of code, you were able to create a touch ID and able to use the touch ID into your application. Okay, if you like this video and want to support my channel, then consider becoming a patron. Your membership, generosity, 
and your donations are always appreciated. You can see that for just $10 a month, you can support my work. This allows also you to get benefits like early access to the articles and books and discounted coupons, behind the scenes footage, and much, much more. I do plan to release one video a week and probably on Tuesday, every Tuesday you will get a new and a brand new video on development. So thank you so much for your continuous support. You can always go and find the links of all of my courses and the Patreon right there in the YouTube description. Thank you so much for your continuous support.